Firstly, I'll take you through the Flutter app I've already created. So as you can see on the right hand side of my screen, I've got the app launched up and running on an iPhone 11. So I'll walk you through it just so you can see some of the functionality I've already built. Firstly, I'll go to getting started. You can see I have a page showing you a little bit about um, yourself. So I'll fill in these details and I'll go 80 as my weight and select it there. The next page is going to give you a daily goal. So this is a water drinking app. The idea is you have a set amount of water that you want to drink uh, daily. And for me, I'm going to make it two liters. So I'm going to type that in 2000 milliliters there. And we'll go to the home screen next. This screen's just a dummy screen. We haven't actually done anything there. So if I go to sign up, it's just going to go straight to the main screen. So here we are. So you can see with the water drinking app, I can add some liquid in if I want. So I could choose fizzy drink, for example. And let's say I've drunk 500 uh, milliliters. And you can see that the goal is 2000 as I input before. And you can see that uh, the amount that I just put in showed up in the completed rate and the drink bottle amount changed. I could add in a bit more if I wanted to. So add some water and you can see it kind of updates in the background. I could add in 700 and you can see a massive jump there. I can also remove some of the water if I accidentally enter a value. So it's a fairly simple app. The last thing is I've got a set settings page. None of this is really hooked up. Uh, the logout button doesn't work either, but it shows you uh, just a little bit about the things that you've uh, set up in the onboarding screens. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the Amplify guide and we'll start to add in authentication for this particular application. So I will go to the Amplify documentation first. So this is docs.amplify.aws. You can just simply do a Google search and you'll find it, or you could find it from the AWS console as well. If you're in the console and you search for AWS Amplify. So you can see nothing's configured or set up at the moment. So we'll go through the getting started. This is a Flutter app that I've built. So I'm going to select Flutter um, getting started. And we will go and have a look at how to set up our app. So we'll start the tutorial. So I've, I've already got Flutter in, I've built the app using it. I'm using VS Code as my IDE. So the next step that I need to do is I need to grab this code here, which installs the Flutter CLI packages for AWS Amplify. And I'll go back to Visual Studio Code and I'll just go to my terminal window to install this package. And I'll paste that command in there. So what this will do is this will give us a CLI that we can call different commands like amplify add authentication, amplify configure, all these different commands that will get amplify set up very, very quickly in this app. Might take a little bit to install. So whilst we're waiting for that uh, action to complete, I'll walk you through a little bit of the app. So effectively, I've got a, a config models file. So this is where I'm keeping all the models of my data. And then I have a bunch of views, which is home, login, onboarding, password resets, and sign up. So these are all the screens that I've built for my app so far. And I've got like mini screens in here or sub views. So sign up confirmation, we'll need that later. And uh, some of the settings areas have been uh, segregated from each other as well. So it looks like whilst that's done, looks like we've got the CLI configured now. So we'll go back to the documentation and we'll see what the next step is. So we need an AWS account. We already have that, but you can follow the guide if you haven't created an AWS account yet. So you can just pop that out and follow it. Now I've already got the Flutter app, so I can kind of scroll down this and, and get to the next part. So what I want to do here is I will want to open up my pubspec YAML file within my Flutter application. So this is the, the Flutter file that acts similar if you've come from an NPM background. It's all the dependencies that you're bringing in or libraries from third parties. So I'll navigate down and I will find the pubspec spec file. Here it is. And if I scroll down, you can see I'm using a couple of third party libraries like Google Fonts and Provider, but I've got Amplify Core and Auth Cognito here that matches up to what it wants to add into the app here as well. You'll notice that Analytics uh, is listed here, but I don't have it 
uh, within my pub spec file. That's because I'm not using analytics in my application at this point in time, but I do want to bring in Amplify Core and Amplify Auth uh, Cognito. So I'll save this file and there will be a flutter pub get command that's run automatically for me. But if you're not using Visual Studio Code or Android Studio, you can just pop that into the terminal and that will install the two Amplify packages. So now that that's completed, we'll have a look at how to integrate into our application. The first thing is we actually want to do an Amplify configure actually, because we haven't set anything up uh, with Amplify just yet. So before I do the next steps, what I might actually do is I will go over to libraries. And I'll just go to project setup and I'll go to the prerequisites. I just want to find the part about configuring. Here we go. So I want to run this command that uses the CLI that I installed just beforehand. So I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code again, and I'm just going to run an Amplify configure. So what this command does is this sets my uh, project up for access to my AWS account. So it's going to set up an IAM user in a second. So I'll pop out to the console. I'll just uh, go back into my app, press enter. I'm already signed in, but if you haven't signed into the console, please do that now. The next thing you'll do is you'll pick a region. I'm based in Sydney uh, or Melbourne, so I'm going to use the Sydney region. So I'll select Southeast 2. And my username is just going to be uh, temp amplifier. I will be deleting this afterwards, so you can't use the keys. And what this will do is it'll, once I've hit enter, it brings me out to the console again, and it's going to ask me to create a user. I'll just clean up some of those tabs. You can see the username I entered in the console. Uh, the terminal just before is showing up there. The only access type that I need is programmatic access. So I only need this one ticked. And you'll see that aligns to what it says in the guide somewhere here as well. The, the next step that I do need though is basically I need to make sure I've got administrator access on the next page. So I'll go to the next page and you can see administrator access is already configured. Now the rest of the setup is quite simple by memory. So I think I just step through until I get to page five. Yep. So I'll do that. I don't need tags or anything like that. I just want to go ahead and create the user. So the user is now set up. I don't want to navigate around uh, away from this page. It's pretty important because I want to grab that access key. So I want to copy that access key and I want to bring it back into Visual Studio Code. I'll press enter on the terminal screen. And you can see now it asks for the access key. So I'm just going to paste that in there. And then now once the access token, so I'll go back to the console and I'll copy that access secret access key token and I'll copy that into the terminal again. And I'll just call this profile temp amplifier. And you can see that I've successfully set up that user. So that's fantastic. So let's have a look at what the next step is in the guide. I think it is. Yes, it is. It's, it's essentially now what we want to do is we want to run Amplify in it. This is going to set up a project within the AWS console for uh, our Amplify app that we're creating. So I'll go back and I'll paste this in Amplify in it. And I'm happy with the default name Water Tracker. This is the development environment. So I'm using Visual Studio Code. And you can see that Flutter is one of the choices of language here. And I can leave the configuration file in the default area as well, but it's going to basically pop it into the same folder that I've got uh, my app sitting in at the moment. So that's all fine, but I could put a location elsewhere if I wanted to. Now, what you'll see in a few seconds as it goes through and creates all the details, you'll see that there'll be an Amplify folder that appears. This is all the cloud formation uh, code that basically says what you want to do within the cloud. And so all of this is uh, essentially amplifies using um, code. It's, it's going to build uh, code um, for your infrastructure. So I will select the profile I created before my temp amplify user when I did the amplify configure. And it's going to start to build the back end. So you'll see a configuration file come into the library folder and then you'll see 
the uh, you'll see the cloud formation appear in an amplify folder here as well. And the cool thing is as I add things in with the CLI, it's going to update that cloud formation. And then I can do an amplify push whenever I add a new feature in so that straight away I can build those resources in the cloud. This does take a little while. So whilst we're waiting for it to build, I'll show you that you can actually see it build in the console. So firstly, you'll see that there's the Amplify app that should have appeared within the Amplify section of the console. So it's building there. So that was just in the AWS Amplify service. But if I go to CloudFormation, you can see that the, it's built a water tracker app in CloudFormation. And I can see that it's busy creating all the resources. So that's, that mirrors essentially what's happening in Visual Studio Code here. And it looks like we're in luck. It looks like the app has been added successfully, which is awesome. So what we want to do next is we want to go amplify status and see what's happened with all that configuration. So I don't have anything to create, but I can see the amplify folder and a bunch of files that's created in there for generating the backend in the cloud. And I can see it's created an amplify configuration file as well. So that's, uh, that's spot on to what we want. So the next thing that I do want to do to get this app up and running is I want to go back here and essentially I want to set up some authentication. So I'm going to go to the authentication side of the document and I'll go to the getting started. And you can see that there is the amplify add authentication command that I'd like to put into the console. So I'll go back to Visual Studio Code and I'll run that command. And it's going to, now I want to choose the default configuration. With Amplify, it's highly customizable, so you can configure uh, everything by how you want it to work within the cloud, but the default's a good way to get started. Now, I want my users to be set up with a username, so I want them to be able to enter a username, maybe give me their email address so I can validate that, and then have them set a password as well. So I'm gonna choose username uh, for the authentication mechanism. Now I don't want that anything advanced in, so I'm just gonna say I'm simply done. And the next thing I wanna do is if I go amplify status again, I can see that this will look a little bit differently. So here we go. So you can see I've got authentication sitting there now, which is pretty cool. Now there's no authentication in the back end just yet. So if I was to go into the console and I looked, I look for, let's say, Cognito, which is what we use for uh, authentication. You can see that there's no user pools or anything in here. So nothing exists at the moment. So what I want to do to push this to the cloud is run a amplify push. And this will then set up authentication for me to use within the cloud. I'll just go, I'm sure I want to continue. And it's gonna take a little bit to build the uh, authentication, um, but that's okay, we'll, we'll let it run for a little bit. What we can do is we can go back and we can refresh the screen to see if anything's coming yet. Not yet, that's okay. So as we wait for this, maybe what we'll do is we'll go to the next part. So we added in to our PubSpecs file Amplify. So maybe what we want to do is we want to initialize it. So how do we initialize it? Essentially what we want to do is we want to go to the, uh, where do I want to put it? Let's, let's put it in the, onboarding step because that's really the first view that everyone sees. You can put it in the app or the main view as well, uh, but the, the first view that everyone logs into is the onboarding step. So I'll, uh, I'll make the changes here. So the first thing is I want to, if I go back to the documentation, I'll want to simply add in, Let's go, let's go sign in. I want to add in the, the Amplify libraries into my application. So at the very top, I do have a couple of the packages here. These match what I actually created in the PubSpec file. So what I'll do is I'll uncomment these. In the speed of time, I've kind of commented out everything. 
to make it nice and quick for everyone or else we'd be spending a bit more than half an hour here. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to, once I've got these files available to the app, I want to create a Amplify instance. And within that, I want to then do a configuration. So if I uncomment these files, essentially what has, happens is when I go to the, the onboarding page, the very first screen of my application, when it boots up, it will, it will automatically configure an Amplify for me. And one of the things that it does look for to get the configuration is it does look for that Amplify configuration Dart file that it created when we ran the Amplify init. So that's going to have some of the settings in there, and then it's going to refer to some of the settings that can be found in the Amplify folder as things get built as well. So if I relaunch my app, and I'm still waiting for my authentication to get built, but that's okay. If I relaunch my app and I go to the debug console, hopefully, looks like it might not have installed the plugin fully, that's okay. What we can do is we can have a look at the pubspec file. Maybe what we'll do is we'll run the, the pubget command once the, once the authentication finishes, and then we should be in business. Here we go. Oh, here we go. You can see Amplify configuration has been built a lot more out. Maybe that was actually what I was waiting for. So let's just uh, refresh this. Let's go to the debug console. And I reckon I will run that command again. So I'll just do amplify, uh, not amplify, I will do a flutter uh, pub get, which basically pulls everything from the pub spec file down. And then I'll just do a quick reset. Ah, I know, I think I actually have to stop it and then relaunch it. So once that's done, I reckon it will then find the packages that we added just beforehand. I think it has to relaunch with Flutter to get the packages. It looks like we have a pod install issue. Uh, I'll quickly fix that up. You do sometimes get that if you've already had the pod file uh, updated. I'll, um, I'll work on that in a second and get that fixed for everyone. Excellent, so I fixed that issue just by simply deleting the podlock file and then going to the iOS directory that the podlock file set in and then I ran a install, uh, a pod install command and that allowed me to then get the app running again. So what I've done next is I've followed the documentation. So it basically says you, you add your libraries in and then you'll add this command in and then your UI within the sign up screen that we're working on should then call this and then try and set up a user. So if we go back to the login screen code, you'll see if I scroll down a little bit further, you can see that that code is sitting in here. The only difference is instead of async, I'm using futures. So that matches that particular code there. And I've, uh, I've implemented it, uh, in, like I've captured from the form boxes and I've plugged all that into here as well. And then I have some validation on this as well. So if I try and sign up and I don't have an email address or something like that, it's going to say it's missing. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a user. And I will set a dummy password as well. And I'll click sign up. And what that does, it's, you can see that it's saying that I haven't signed up completely in the console. That's perfectly fine. But what I should see is if I check my email, I will see in a few seconds a code. Now the sign up confirmation screen I've pre-built as well. So if essentially I've done the same thing. I've added in the two Amplify libraries and then I have gone down here and I have added the sign up code just here that it asks you for if you check the guide as a second stage if you're getting confirmation. So you can see that code there matches up to this. Now I have the sign up code, so I'm going to type these numbers in. And hopefully I'll be able to sign in. And there we go, we can see that we have user signed in equals true. 
So I've got some uh, detection to look for a token whenever I reach the home screen. So going to have a quick look at that. So you can see in here, it basically looks for a, a sign in session. I think I also trigger it as soon as you come out of that screen as well. So as soon as you come out of the confirmation screen, it checks the token. Now, very quickly, I did add the same code for logout that you'll find within the wiki. So if you were to look at the sign out page, I've added that in and I've just added that into my logout um, code here. So if I go back to the app and I go logout, you can see that I get brought to the login screen. Now I'm no longer authenticated, but if I try and log in as well, you can see user signed and equals true updated and I've authenticated. So you can see very quickly how I added authentication into my app. I used the existing login screens that I had, uh, but I uh, connected in Cognito and I was able to get this within my app within about 15 to 20 minutes.